Okay, welcome to another uh, episode with uh, Engine Building with Raj. <laughs> and, uh, Better known as Buddy Van Dudo. <laughs> <laughs> we're working on a um, 351 block that um, is board 30 and it's going to have a 4 inch stroke. So uh, 408 cubic inches that is going to go into uh, this 1992 Mustang uh, LX Coupe. Um, so yeah, so here's our engine builder Raj. Why don't you uh, tell us your engine building experience? Well, uh, I have a degree in automotive technology uh, from the uh, 68, so it's a long time ago. Um, I worked at the Lubrizol Corporation as a, uh, an engine builder uh, and I was building Oldsmobile uh, 425 VH till I could see them in my sleep. <clears throat> and uh, I've since graduated to other things. I built Mazda rotaries and, and uh, sundry other things. Um, I've always had an interest in this simply because the internal combustion engine has basically uh, uh, changed mankind. You know. Anyway, uh, now I'm a, a gray bearded old schmuck and I still enjoy uh, working on these engines. It's just, you know, you like working with your hands. It's fun. Anyway. Why don't you, um, tell, us, why don't you tell us what we're doing here? We're, uh, we're finished we're finish honing this block uh, with the stones, these 300 stones, which puts, puts a nice finish on the, uh, on the engine. They're, they're basic, it's a basic Sun and uh, AN 110 home. And it comes with instructions. It's all pretty straightforward. Um, Anyway, you you basically you put the uh, you put the hone together like they tell you, and it's it's a um, planetary gear kind of deal with the adjustment. And there's an X by each set of hones, and you can't put them in wrong simply because the uh, you could see the way the uh, the pins are. So wherever the pin lines up, so obviously you can't put that in there. So you put the stone in. The uh, the rack is is of course here goes in here, so you leave the rack out. You put the stone in obviously with the teeth facing in at the X. So you put one in there, and then you rotate the horn around, and you put the other one in here with the teeth facing in. It's got to be a stone, not a not a, a guide. You put that in there. You just hold them with your hand. Then you do the same thing with the guide. The guide goes in only one way, like so, by the X. You do the same thing, rotate it 90 or 180 degrees. Put the other one in at the X. There's the X there, it's kind of hard to see. Uh, and that's it, you just gently hold them together. And then you take the rack, you rotate the, the hones on like a universal joint here. And you can see, whoops, drop the air, the air gun. You just push this in, hold them together lightly, and there it is. Then this fits in here, and this is the fine adjustment to this wing nut. Now, of course, you don't want to keep fine adjusting it till you get to, you, you'd go crazy. You, you want to course adjust, just pull this out a little bit so that it's off the gear. You can see that little gear in there, and it comes out, and you get it. You can get a ruler. We don't have one here. Get a ruler, adjust it roughly to four inches. Then you just push this in till it engages. See now, if you're off, you can stick it in the bore and see how close you are. It should be fairly close. Um, you don't have to worry about. Uh, all right, we're a little off here, so we could come out a little farther by just pulling this out just a little bit and coming out a little more. And pushing it in. And come a little more. Oops. There we go. And let's go one more. Alright, let's see how that works. We might be too far. If the wing nut gets in the way, you just move it. Very easy to move. And then you see we're too far. Now we got a honing plate on here, which is this big thick cast piece. And uh, that's made by this BHJ uh, company. And uh, what it does is it's, it, it stimulates, uh, simulates 
having a cylinder head on here. So you put this on with a head gasket, presumably the head gasket you're going to use, which means you got to buy an extra set. Um, you put the head gasket on, you put this plate on, and then you put the bolts on and you torque it to, to uh, specifications. That, that, what it does is it distorts the cylinders according to if the way they would be if the engine was assembled. So when you hone the engine, you're gonna, you're gonna feel the hone hitting, uh, you know, slight distortions in the cylinder, but you want a nice round cylinder. That's what you want. And you want it straight. And you want a crosshatch of approximately 60 degrees, which of course we don't have here yet, but we're, we're gonna finish with the, uh, with the carbide, uh, what they call a dingleberry home. Flex home. Flex home, yeah. Anyway, I call it dingleberry. Because it looks like a dingleberry. <laughs> anyway, uh, we'll adjust this in a little. And we're going to just hone a little bit here because we only have to do about uh, a little more. We only have to do about two tenths, which is zero, 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 two. That's a very small amount. Watch it, I don't trip on everything over here. <laughs> Uh, so we're not going to do a lot of a lot of honing here, and we have a a, uh, a variac or, or a, uh, a rheostat on the uh, the drill to slow it down because you do not want a high speed drill here. You have to, uh, and we have a, a you have to hone it to to get the cross hatch, which is the angle of the scratches, the real fine scratches you're putting on. Anyway, we have a little copper wire we attach to the home. What we did was we put the, uh, we put the, uh, still a little bit, we put the home in there and, uh, there we go. We went to the bottom and you do not want to hit the bottom web. Now he'll, he'll get down there and show you where the webs are. See, you see where the home goes in? It can hit the bottom web. Do not want that. That's bad news <laughs> because it, it it of course chips the stone and uh, puts your your adjustment out of kilter. So you want to mark where the thing is. That's why we have this copper wire here. Now if he comes back around with the camera, you can see where the copper wire is. See. So I know to see the copper wire is a little bit below this surface. So when we hone, we don't want to hone any farther than that. See. If you go too far, you hit the web. You do not want that. So that's the deal. Anyway, we got it in there now. Now you have to use the fine adjustment to bring it out. Now you keep going. It'll, it, it moves fairly easy until you feel some resistance. And here we go. We're getting close here. All right, now I feel a little resistance here. Now to check it, what you do is you hit the drill. It's a little loose still. This drill's screaming for mercy because the gearbox is probably dry. Um, but anyway, that should go away. Anyway, here we are. Still needs more adjustment. Anyway, here we go. That's about what you want. That's a little fast. Anyway, we're going to turn the Variac down. Where's the Variac? Right, he's going to lower that just a little bit. That's it. Now we got about the speed we want. So you can see as you stroke the home, you're getting that cross hatch. And the other thing is, you can hear the speed of the drill, which is a very good indication of, of um, the taper in the cylinder. Because if you have taper in the bottom, then the drill's gonna slow down. You'll hear it load up. So you then then what you do is you what they call dwelling. You dwell in the bottom like this. With this little short stroke. You hear the drill speed slightly increase. You know you're taking some stock out of the bottom to get the cylinder straight. Then you start increasing your stroke okay, until you get this you get a consistent speed from top to bottom you know you got a straight cylinder. Now when a drill starts speeding up, you know you're taking some stock out. So you can just tighten this just a very little bit. And you can see, see how it loads up real fast? 
and then you stroke. That's about the speed you want. Now as the drill increases in speed, you can hear it. It's starting to speed up. And then what you want to do is let the trigger go when you're at the bottom and you're pulling up. So that you can you can have you be able to unload the hone and you do this a couple three times and then you just take slide the stones out. Don't worry about a little bit of mark you're gonna make on there, it means nothing. And then what you want to do, you can see the buildup on the stone, which is this this the, you see the shiny uh, the sh shiny baloney here. So you take a wire brush and you get this crap off the stone because that's called glazing over. So that's some of the cast iron. And then you do the other stone. You can see the glaze on there. And you wire brush it off. And it's a good idea. Whoop, and we'll watch our copper wire here. Then you get your air gun and you blow all the, you blow all the stuff off the stone. Okay, and now we're going to wipe the cylinder out. I'm holding this cylinder with uh, a series 300 stones, which gives a real fine finish. Now we're going to check the final bore size. Now this is the this is a Sterrett dial bore gauge. So you can see the big needle is, each one of those uh, big marks is a thousand. The small marks is .0005. It's right written on the indicator there, you can read it. And when you push this, I'm pushing this with my thumb, when the small dial gets close to zero, the big uh, dial sweeps over close to zero. Now right there is exactly 30 thousandths over four inches. Now we check this on a zero, on a four to five inch mic, which we of course, uh, we don't have it over there, but you, you put the mic in a vise and then you put this in there and you, you zero the gauge by moving this and the dial moves. You can move the zero. But of course you want the, uh, the uh, mic to be set on exactly 30 thousandths. So there we are. So now when you put it in, you put, the, you put the dial bore gauge head in about a third to a half of the way down and you bring it up. Now these two little pins here on the side, they center the gauge. So you can't, you know, you can't do this wrong. So you put it in, you put the, the, the big pin in here. This is where you make your adjustment, by the way, here, with a wrench, and you move that. Anyway, you put this in about a third to the half of the way down, and you bring it up. You can feel the pins start retracting. You keep going till you see zero here on the small one, and then you see the big needle coming around. Now there we are. We're exactly five tenths over. That's a half a thousandth over 30. That's right where we want to be. Now the next one we're going to is this one. You can see, you see where that is? That's about 002, 000, two thousandths over. We want to be to 0005 over. So we're going to hone this probably 25 to 30 strokes, and then we're going to go to the next one and so on. And that's pretty much it. All right, thanks for explaining, <coughs> explaining that, Roger.